Aloha golfers! Welcome to Golf in the Cosmos, episode 22. I'm Kevin Robalski, and here we talk all things Mac O'Grady and Morad. When I've been asked in the past who on the PGA Tour best represents the Morad methodology, I have always said, Mr. Grant Waite. And today's video will feature Grant Waite and Mac O'Grady. Now, Grant came on the tour in the early 90s, already swinging in a style that looked like Mac and the Morad method, although I think Grant used another instructor that was teaching the Morad principles to him. And I think in the, probably in somewhere in the mid 90s, Grant hooked up with Mac. I think Grant came to one of the schools uh, early on and then had a one on one relationship with Mac. I met Grant, I think, in 1997. Um, he came to the Sony Open where I was the teaching pro and uh, we spent a week together. And of course, Mac was there. Uh, we had a very nice time. And I think we did this a couple of years in a row. And, uh, and Grant was a very astute student of Mac and Morad. And his swing action definitely showed that. I think in one interview I heard Tiger Woods might have said that Grant Waite was his favorite swing on the tour. This may have been in somewhere around the late 90s, early 2000s. So, other players uh, on the tour that represent the Morad model, just to keep on topic there, of course, Robert Rock has got an incredibly um, uh, specific Morad swing. I've seen Bet Brett Rumford, Alex Norin, uh, Justin Rose definitely has Morad influence in his swing. And of course, there's many players that have either directly or indirectly worked with Mac and uh, teachers of Mac, and that could be also through Stack and Tilt, Andy Plummer and Mike Bennett, and Dean Wilson comes to mind on that side. And, but Grant probably clo most closely represents the, the exactness of the Morad model as it was taught in the 90s and maybe even the early 2000s. Um, much like Jody Mudd did in the 80s version of the Morad methodology. So today's video will have Mac and Grant swinging side by side and from various camera angles. Lots of great stuff to be observant of. A couple of points I want to make uh, before we get into the video is at this particular juncture, Mac is very focused on keeping his gaze on a very fixated point well after impact. So simply put, you could say, keep your head down, right? But it's a little bit more involved than that. In fact, many teachers will say keeping your head down is a myth, but keeping your eyes focused on a very single point is incredibly useful for the brain to repeat the swing and stay in balance. And in the yoga world, to do all these very sophisticated arm balancing, our gaze has to be locked on a very specific point. And if we change that, even a millimeter, we will fall out of the pose. So in yoga, this is called the drishti, but in, in more technical terms, Mac alluded to this in the 1986 video, is the foveal field. Right? Basically, the gaze of the eyes. Your, your brain's connection to the golf ball is through the eyes. And basically everything begins and ends in your, with your brain. So that's coordinating the movements, moving the muscles, moving the skeleton, and um, contributing to the rhythm and timing. So it's very important that your eyes are fixated on that ball for a very long time so that the brain has the most information to hit a good shot. And what can happen over time, so age has a influence over this, as well as just any kind of stimula stimulation to the nervous system, is what can happen is your eyes can shift forward towards the target prematurely. 
infinitesimally before impact. And this can create a lot of errors. Now, on the most major side of this is the yips. So the yips are a form of focal dystonia. So focal, uh, eyes focus, shifting towards the target before you hit the ball. So it's very target oriented and it can happen obviously on short putts, which is basically what we might call as peaking. Um, but basically short putts, chipping and driving are probably in that order what we'll see this kind of dystonia, the eyes flashing towards the target too, too early. Of course, you can make exceptions to this rule. We've seen in the past great golfers like Curtis Strange move his head you know, a few inches to the right and then back towards to the left in the swing. David Duvall and Annika Sorenstam were looking um, towards the target at impact, and, and of course they did all right. So I wouldn't say you can't always do this, but is it the most reproducible? Is it the simplest? Is it the easiest on the brain to perform? Certainly, you know, in my opinion, not. I would try to clean that up. Although if you practice enough golf, you can, and history will show this, you can almost repeat anything and uh, have some success with it. But does it last over time? And is it creating some errors that uh, perhaps that uh, without a lot of practice and, and some compensation, it would be uh, very hard to maintain it. So um, definitely in my mind, keeping your head in a more still position and keeping your eyes focused on the ball longer will help all golfers. Now it's not to say you can't move your head at all. So I think one of the misconceptions is, is that if you just keep your head locked, and nose and eyes straight on the ball, and you don't move or rotate your head whatsoever, you'll just basically pick up the club and end up looking like this. So the swing will become very much up and down. And then the only way really you can get the club on a nice arc in the downswing is if you then you looped it um, in reverse. So, and that can also create obviously a lot of issues. So your head can rotate in the backswing to help the body rotate its 90 degrees, but you want to keep your head over the ball and the ball may shift slightly into your peripheral vision, but not so much so that um, your uh, eyes will, uh, should not leave, both eyes should not leave the ball. So if I close my left eye, and then take it back. I can rotate my head slightly and still see the ball out of my right eye. And then of course I can open my left eye and there it is. Now if I turn my head one inch more, now I cannot see the ball out of my right eye. And that can create some issues, right? So that's something that would be um, a useful practice tool is hitting some balls, closing your left eye and see if that has an effect on your top of the backswing and your contact. So it's not to say that you can't rotate your head, but don't rotate your head so much that you lose the visual um, impression of the ball with your right eye. And also you can rotate your head, but make sure you're rotating it in the direction of your backswing, right? So if you follow like a clockwise movement, your head should to turn slightly clockwise. We'll see, and we've seen in the past, maybe someone like Paul Azinger rotated his head counterclockwise, going in that direction. And that can create some issues as well. And we've seen Jack Nicholas kind of rotate his head and tilt his head to the side to kind of get his chin out of the way to facilitate a better turn. But you know, some of the some of the photos in, in Jack's pictures you know, he almost looks like he's leaning towards the, the left side at the top of his backswing. So you want to be careful about how you rotate and turn your head, right? So it's basically a very natural movement in clockwise movement in the same direction as your overall pivot, right? So we're turning back 90 degrees and then our head just slightly moves to the clockwise position with it. So that's what I would recommend. Now with the driver, it can rotate a little bit more. You're probably turning your shoulders 100 to 110 degrees. 
So then the right eye is maybe not as important to keep it um, on the ball. And of course, the ball's on a tee, so that's also making it much easier to make good contact. Uh, but I would still you know, recommend some experimentation with the uh, keeping the left eye closed and making sure you still have visual contact with your right eye. And also, we want to look at through the ball that the, you want to maintain your both eyes on the divot well, until you about get to the finish. And then you can turn your head last. I would say that this is what this video is going to demonstrate the difference between Mac and Grant, as Mac is keeping his eyes on the divot after impact longer. And again, that just basically reduces that urge to bottle the ball, to peek at the result, to you know, be anxious about where the ball's going, and to see it and to follow it immediately off the club face. So I would recommend the idea of swinging your arms past your body and your head. Right? So your weight shift is going to go to the left. Your hips are going to rotate. Your shoulders are going to continue to rotate. And your wrist will release and recock, but your gaze is going to stay down. So in the, by keeping your head down and your gaze down, you're not going to look like this. Right? Yes, that would definitely be a mistake. So your body's rotating, but your head and your eyes are independent of that rotation. Right? So I'm going to turn back, stay centered. I'm going to shift my weight, unwind my hips, and my, deliver my arms into the release area, recock the wrist, straighten the left knee, stay in my tilts, and keep the eyes down longer. And that should have a significant uh, improvement in your ball striking. And I think that that's something that uh, any player at any level can work on very simply to improve their golf game. Um, this video in the 90s does not have Mac um, with a closed stance. Um, and he's not really leaning to the left either. He does have the forward press, right? So the forward press is coming in a little bit more. And because of the forward press, his max head is a little bit more to the right. And so if I bring my hands back to the middle, my head will tend to get more over the ball. And if my hands go forward, I will do that um, slant to the right at address a little bit more pronouncedly. So you'll see that with Mac. And I think that's one of the ways, that one of the reasons why Mac from P2 to P4 has got to feel like he's leaning towards the left because his head is um, to the right at address. His head is to the right at address because the hands are significantly forward pressed at address. You know, maybe not significantly, but at least in line with the left arm. And actually, I like that. So I'm not saying that that's wrong, but it's different than the 80s version for sure. And um, the other thing you'll see is Mac takes the swing, takes the backswing back very slow and deliberately. So he's not swinging his arms back like he did in the 80s, creating a lot of speed and swish. What he's doing is he's, he's pivoting the club back, right? So he's kind of going up the plane, down the plane, um, on an incline plane, and, um, and basically using his big muscles, the hips and the shoulders to wind up. His arm speed is going the same speed as his rotation speed. So he's going back very slow, kind of uh, tick, 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 boom. And then, you know, concentrated impact, put on the brake, stop the finish, and kept his eyes down. So you'll see that also um, a little bit different. Grant's, Grant Waits' tempo is much faster. The other thing you'll see from this angle is, of course, not only the hip turn, but the hip slant, right? So Max and Grant's right hip will turn back and it'll be higher than the left. And again, that's mostly predicated 
on staying in your tilt, you know, torso tilt number one, at address, and then creating that side bend in the backswing. So basically, shoulders rotate on plane, right? I've got to have some side bend from P1 to P4, then that's going to bring my right hip up. So if I start to come out of this, then my left knee flex starts to straighten and my hip turn becomes too horizontal. I go from P4 to P9 and I come out of that torso tilt number one, then my hips then level out and become more horizontal. Right? Even though I have torso tilt number two, um, coming out of torso tilt number one, I lose my hip slant. Right? So that's something that you'll see in good players is that they, the pelvic line, the belt line will look very horizontal, even though I have the side bend to the right in the P9 position. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything I wanted to um, uh, suggest and point out before the video. Um, there's no instruction in this video. It's just Mac and Grant hitting side by side. Please enjoy it and look forward to some more surprises next week. Aloha. Thousand one. Thousand two. Thousand So if you want me to count, do you get a fraction earlier? Uh, you count, but sure. I'll pop all you. Just go to get it here. Move one inch that way. Thin. The rest were all, the rest were good. Okay, we are on. Right. 
So we do one more. Give it up, 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 give it up. Why is that? Because they got the camera there. Right. Listen, I'm just going to barely miss the camera much. Thousand and one, thousand and two, thousand and three, go. Ooh, ready to see that lady. Oh, lady, that just missed it. Yeah, one more, one more. Oh, man, I don't want you to hit me that one. That no, one. you're right at the camera. I know, I am. I'm worried about you hitting me. Do you know how many openings in a tournament that I had just that much? Alright. <laughs> thousand one. Thousand two. Thousand two. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Alright. Trying to get it one inch above it. Thousand one. Now come back over this way, of course, because it's a little. Well, I'll try this. 